Hi there, Walterners. I'm Jack, and this is DS1 Newscast, and we have a lot to talk about today. So, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm going to be trying out a different format and making this into more of a longer form, in depth, jam packed, uh, rumor roundup style of video. As you know, we're now officially on the road to D23 in August, and it's just, you know, four months away. And like I said a couple of weeks ago in a video, this year's D23, from what I've heard, is going to be big. And Disney want this to be a kind of return to form for D23, back to like 2015, 2017, 2019 levels. You know, getting away from the whole blue sky brainstorm stuff that we've seen in recent years, and getting back to making announcements at D23. And lo and behold, this past week, it really did feel like the rumor mill kind of kicked into gear getting ready for D23. So we've got loads to talk about in terms of rumors and rumblings, and we're going to cover it all. But the first thing I think we need to talk about is obviously Disney's Animal Kingdom. As recently, there was a major development for the Animal Kingdom expansion plans, and that came in the way of a permit that was filed for the construction of backstage on-site offices for Walt Disney Imagineering at Animal Kingdom. And this is a very important step in the expansion plans, as whenever Imagineering do these kind of large-scale construction projects, they need to have a central location for the Imagineering offices nearby. And this is going to be located, as we can see in the permit, just north of Carley River Rapids. And it's a five acre location with around five trailers there for the office space. And it's going to have approximately 360 parking spaces. But the thing that's interesting about this is this is actually quite a considerably sized Imagineering hub for just the Dinoland project, you know, the revamp and overhaul of Dinoland, of Dinorama and the dinosaur attraction in that part of the park. And it might indicate that Disney has bigger plans at play here. And in actual fact, earlier this week on Twitter, I actually said that Disney might be looking at doing a multi-phase approach to Animal Kingdom's expansions. And, uh, you know, there might be another expansion waiting to be greenlit for Animal Kingdom as well that this location for Imagineering would also support. So that's the reason why this, it's the size that it is. But the reason why this is so exciting is because the Dino Land plot of land is fairly ready to begin construction very soon. And I think that we're most likely looking at uh, the next fiscal year in terms of October of this year for construction to actually begin on this area. But I could be wrong, but they do tend to like to line up the beginning of these projects with, with the fiscal years because then they can uh, neatly put, tie it all into the capital expenditure for that next fiscal year. But um, that's not to say, by the way, that Magic Kingdom's Beyond Big Thunder plans aren't on the table. They are very much definitely still on the table and Imagineering definitely do have some big plans there. But the thing is about that is it's going to take a lot more preparation work on that site before they can even start to go vertical on any sort of attractions or lands within Magic Kingdom. So we're probably looking at like 2029, 20, 2034 20, new things to open at Magic Kingdom's Beyond Big Thunder section. But when it comes to Dino Land and Dinosaur, the retheme of Dinosaur to Indiana Jones, that can be ready and up and running by around 2027, 2028. So over the next few years, we're going to see a lot of activity and focus on this corner of Animal Kingdom. And looking at the artwork that they revealed last year in September of 2023, Destination D23, for this whole overhaul of Dinoland to the Tropical Americas, the Encanto attraction part of the artwork pretty much takes over the entirety of Chester and Hester's Dino Armor. And that plot of land is roughly around 2.2 acres as it currently stands, but they've even got room to expand further into the backstage area there as well, which is most likely what they'll probably end up doing as well at the same time. And so this area could quite easily support quite a sizable attraction show building. And just for an example, if we took the Remy's Ratatouille Adventure attraction show building from over in Epcot and just plopped it directly into place, you can see that this part of the proposals could easily have an attraction the scale and scope and size of a Ratatouille within the Animal Kingdom expansion. And, you know, ever since the Encanto attraction rumours began really early in 2022, and I've been doing videos on it since then, I'm still of the same opinion, and that is, it just makes way too much sense for if they're going to do an Encanto attraction, 
it should be using a trackless dark ride for the attraction as it just tells the story perfectly as after all you know if you're moving throughout the casita on the magical floors then the trackless dark ride makes a lot of sense for that and after all you know you gotta think about it from imagineering's point of view they assess a bunch of ride systems for various ips and they try and pick the correct one but the three main factors in this situation is capacity expense and suitability as after all you know they want to add more capacity to animal kingdom the expense you know has to be within the budget for the proposals and then the suitability the suitability of the ride system to tell the storyline of the attraction and i think you know it just ticks all the boxes and makes too much sense for it not to happen really and after all mystic manor over in hong kong disneyland is similar in a way you know you enter this big mansion you traversing around this mansion in this trackless dark ride and that would be the same kind of thing here with the madrigals and the casita of Encanto so it would make a lot of sense and after all Disney's been very hot on the trackless dark ride recently and that's because it's reliable and they perfected the technology for reliability to keep up time and good operational time and then also it's a people eater it's got good capacity and so they're very much aligned with this and they've already got rise of resistance and runaway railway and ratatouille in hollywood studios and epcot and so animal kingdom could really benefit from a trackless dark ride within these proposals and then we come to indiana jones and the re-theme of dinosaur to indiana jones and i've actually been talking about this back in january and said that it wasn't going to be a clone and i'm just going to play a clip from back in january just to recap that point and specifically what the rumors are saying is that the indiana jones re-theme of dinosaur is the thing that's pretty dead set on happening and that's because it's not just going to be a clone of the Indiana Jones ride in Disneyland. It's going to have its own original story and original show set elements and things like that to match the layout of the dinosaur attraction. And so just building off that, I know a lot of people have been saying, how does Indiana Jones fit within Animal Kingdom? And I can tell you right now that Imagineering are going to integrate Indiana Jones within Animal Kingdom. And they're going to make it work from a story perspective. And there's a lot of room for different things here as after all animal kingdom yes it's about animals but it also had this whole beastly kingdom concept early on and this whole mythological creatures it wasn't just dinosaurs and animals it was also meant to be mythological creatures and so whether they're going to go dinosaurs or mythological creatures with this indiana jones as an ip plays with that in that whole world of myths and legends so it makes sense that they could make a story that will better fit animal kingdom and then you've also got to consider that Joe Rohde has just been announced to be being made a Disney legend at D23 as well. And that kind of lines up with the idea that supposedly they're wanting to bring back some former Imagineers as advisors within uh, Imagineering. And so if they've got Joe Rohde back as an advisor on this project, as after all, Joe Rohde is the architect of Animal Kingdom. You know, it's his thing. So if they're bringing him back to help shepherd this whole dino land overhaul i've got a lot of confidence in the fact that they'll make this work um from that perspective and then the other thing that a lot of people talk about is capacity concerns and this is just replacing existing attractions but when you look at primeval world and triceratops spin those weren't particularly high capacity attractions as after all primeval world was a roller coaster that was susceptible to incremental weather and if there were thunderstorms it had to had to close and stuff like that and then also just operationally it just wasn't the best in terms of operation uptime so you know from all of that perspective if they are to build a dark ride an enclosed indoor dark ride for Encanto that is going to be able to handle way more capacity than even Triceratops Spin and Primeval World managed to do combined. So that is actually adding capacity to Animal Kingdom. And then also from a dinosaur's perspective, yes, it's the same ride system and it's going to be a new theme. But if Indiana Jones manages to draw in more people to go ride the dinosaur ride system and takes its wait time for on average from 30 minutes to 60 minutes or from 45 minutes to an hour and a half, then that is actually adding capacity to animal kingdom because it means it's taking more people away from other attractions and and utilizing that dinosaur attraction more fully even though it's not doing more throughput it's managing to pull more people to that attraction so 
it is, in a way, more capacity for Animal Kingdom by fixing these two areas of Dino Land. And then we come to this whole multi-phase approach that they might be taking towards Animal Kingdom's future, as there might be another expansion on the horizon as well, which hasn't been greenlit yet, but, you know, it's the reason why this Imagineering backstage section is so large is because it might be to support multiple expansions, obviously the Dino Land one and an additional one. And supposedly, within this expansion, it's going to be an e-ticket attraction that they might be adding to Animal Kingdom. Now, this hasn't been greenlit yet, but we've got to start to look at other projects around the world as they all kind of tie together. And back in 2019, it was very early in the planning stages, but they had ideas of a Lion King attraction for Animal Kingdom. Uh, very early on, you know, it wasn't, you know, it's kind of blue sky, but it was going to be located to the side of Festival of the Lion King. In that kind of space between that and Club 33 back there, that's where they would have put the show building. But obviously this is just very early tentative plans that they had. And what's interesting about this is that plan obviously fell away, but the Lion King idea of the attraction there's been a lot of rumors about the lion king land and lion king attraction supposedly being brought to walt disney studios park over at disneyland paris as part of the expansions around the lake area there and if they're going to be building a lion king attraction well you know they had originally been playing with some ideas that then fell off the table for animal kingdom so possibly could they be designing once and then building twice as disney liked to do and then the other thing which is if it's not lion king which is the ip that's chosen there's the other idea which is we all know that avatar is going to be going into disneyland you know there's the avatar experience or attraction or mini land that's coming to disneyland resort and what the rumors are indicating with this is that it's going to be going into Disney California Venture. Supposedly, what the rumors are saying is within the backlot area, which is actually where the Monsters Inc. ride is. But it all depends upon the Disneyland Forward proposal getting the go ahead from the Anaheim City Council. And, um, you know, we're going to hopefully find that out in April. It looks like it's moving positively in that direction. And if they do get the green light and the go ahead on the Disneyland Forward plans, then the first thing that they will most likely want to do is uh, build the Eastern Gateway project, which was presented back in 2017, then was cancelled or delayed because it didn't get the go-ahead from the Anaheim City Council. And it would then free up more space there near the backlot area to expand on out. And it's vital that that would happen for this Avatar experience to go into the DCA backlot area in that, in that spot there. And if they're going to be designing a brand new attraction, the type of attraction that's rumoured for Disney California Adventure is supposedly a e-ticket boat ride. And it's not necessarily going to just tie into or themed around Avatar 1 or 2 with Way of Water, but it might be also linked to Avatar 3 and 4 and other parts of that whole universe, you know, more of the human-based uh, world of the universe as well. And so that's how it would work within DCA. But... This is where it gets interesting for Animal Kingdom because Animal Kingdom has an expansion spot for Pandora the World of Avatar. And the location of that is from where the show building is for Flight of Passage and Nave River Journey to the side of there to the side of uh, Rainforest Cafe. And in that spot, that corner, that's where the expansion spot is for Pandora the World of Avatar. But to use up that expansion spot, it would mean having to relocate some of the executive parking. It would mean having to move that out and then also relocate the bus loop and the, um, you know, the guest buses on out, the bus depot there, a bit further out. And then you'd also be then going into the cast member parking, which would mean then you'd have to relocate some of the cast parking. So the reason why this is supposedly part of a multi-phase approach is because that requires a lot of infrastructure work before they could even begin work on an expansion to Pandora. But if they're gonna be designing one attraction, they might be building twice. And the other thing about this is, it's been long rumoured that the Shanghai boat ride tech from the Shanghai Pirates of the Caribbean ride, you know, with the magnetic ride system for that uh, boat ride, is going to be coming to the domestic US parks at some point. And this would then mean that then Disneyland and Walt Disney will both get that same tech at the same time. And then it could help split some of the cost of the R&D for the design of that ride across both parks if they were to design once and build twice. So that's, you know, obviously 
further off in the future, nothing's been greenlit yet, and it's very much in the rumour stages at the moment, and that could be the reason why we're seeing such a large area for the offices for this Imagineering uh, site within Animal Kingdom. And then moving on to the next topic, it's been officially confirmed that a drone show is returning to Walt Disney World, and we're going to be seeing some sort of drone use at Walt Disney World at long last. Now, the last time we saw drones at Walt Disney World was 2016 with the Intel, it was the Star Bright Holiday Show at Disney Springs, and, you know, back in February, WDW Magic spotted uh, a show drone with the show unit on the drone hovering over the Disney Springs Buena Vista Lake area and uh, this new drone show is called Disney Dreams That Soar and it's going to be running from May 24th to September 2nd 2024 and it's going to be taking place at Disney Springs again. And this is very much a test of how people respond to the drones at Walt Disney World and also just beginning to use some of this drone technology at Walt Disney World, not over a guest area, um, further back, so therefore it's, it's not near the park or damaging any park infrastructure or anything like that, or encroaching on any park infrastructure. It's fairly easy to set up and run from one of the car parks over there. So. It makes a lot of sense and um, the Disneyland Paris drone shows that are extremely impressive that we've all seen. They've had the electrical light drone show parade that they've got over there and it was all of the fantastic drone shows that we've seen over in Disneyland Paris. They use a partner company called Dronosos uh, to make these drone shows happen and this company has now actually opened up a a uh, regional office in Orlando as well. So it's very possible that they're going to be using uh, their technology and their know-how for this drone show at Disney Springs. But like I said, this is very much like an early test for what they could do within the parks. And of all the parks that could do with a drone show in, as part of a nighttime spectacular, in my opinion, I think it's Animal Kingdom. As after all, you've got the Rivers of Light, you know, outdoor theatre there that is just sitting vacant. They've got no nighttime show. They haven't had a nighttime show there since before the pandemic. They had Rivers of Light, We Are One, uh, that was playing up until uh, COVID shut down and all that sort of stuff. But since then, they haven't had a nighttime show. And the reason why I think this makes the most sense is obviously Animal Kingdom, they can't have fireworks. They can't have, you know, any sort of uh, pyrotechnics like that. They could maybe do a uh, water show a bit like World of Colour, but that body of water is actually connected to the main uh, body of water, which means that it's not particularly clean. So that could mess up a lot of the water spouts and the fountains and stuff like that. So the other option would be, I think, a drone show within that outdoor theatre, the Rivers of Light uh, Amphitheatre. So it makes a lot of sense. And they've even got a space where they could uh, fly the drones from backstage near Expedition Everest on out across the water so it's not going over the guest area they could close down that bridge whilst that's happening fly the drones out do the show fly them back and it won't be going over a guest you know public guest area so i think this makes a lot of sense for animal kingdom and it would really round out the offerings you'd have indiana jones you'd have encanto you'd have a new drone show and then Further off into the future, I'm thinking like closer to 2030 here, an e-ticket attraction for an expansion at Animal Kingdom as well. It could really add a lot to this park. But that's not all for today, as I also want to talk very quickly about some other things. And that's Epcot, Hollywood Studios, and Disney Cruise Line. And to begin with Epcot, Test Track is going to be getting a massive revamp, which is actually being paid by Chevrolet. You know, it's being paid by the pavilion sponsor. And it's going to be, you know, somewhat inspired by World of Motion and bringing back a lot of that to the attraction. And um, it's going to be a massive year-long refurbishment, supposedly. And from what I've heard, uh, the closure will line up with roughly the opening of Communicore Hall and Communicore Plaza in the centre of Epcot. So when the construction walls go down there on June 10th, Roughly around mid-June, mid to late June, uh, we should be expecting construction walls to go up um, in test track, you know, roughly around there. And it could be later, but it could also be as early as mid to late June for these uh, construction walls to go up. But either way, June, July, we're going to be having the closing of test track, supposedly. So um, that's what I've been hearing. And the other thing about this is there are rumours at the moment that the outdoor track of test track is going to supposedly be enclosed as part of this massive revamp. 
And if they do this with the amount of money that they're spending on this project, it would be a huge win for Epcot in terms of capacity. Because although they're gonna have to take a hit with Test Track going down initially for a year or so, when this thing comes back up, it means that Test Track then isn't going to be susceptible to thunderstorms or rain or anything like that, which shuts down the entire attraction. So then that way, this attraction then can handle a lot more capacity within Epcot. And if they are gonna be doing this, I think it's a major win. And I'm very excited to see what happens with Test Track. Um, supposedly, this is what they're trying to get ready for 2025 summer 2025 as a way to have something new to offer whilst all the attention is going to be on epic universe they want to open up something in summer 2025 and test track is likely going to be it so that's what i'm hearing on that front and then in disney's hollywood studios uh for d23 all that i know is that um Something big is being planned for Hollywood Studios. They are working on projects for that park still because they still don't feel like it's fully rounded out yet. And this might be unrelated, but the Launch Bay area through to Rock and Roller Coaster is the expansion zone within Hollywood Studios that they could be looking at. And that would mean demolishing Star Wars Launch Bay and building on through round the back of there. And obviously at the moment that backside of the Market Street area is currently used for cast break rooms and the cafeteria for the cast members of Hollywood Studios so that would have to be relocated but that is the next area they would like to expand at Hollywood Studios whether it's linked to this next big thing that they've got in the works for Hollywood Studios or whether we even get that announced at D23 they're working towards adding more stuff at Disney's Hollywood Studios. Other stuff Disney Cruise Line they announced their having a brand new ship that the last of their Triton class ships are going to be launching next year. Um, obviously they announced the Disney Treasure is going to be setting sail in uh, December of this year. So I would expect probably this next ship, which is called the Disney Destiny, is going to be launching or setting sail towards the end of 2025. And that's a big deal. But, um, you know, they're looking to spend a lot of money on Disney Cruise Line over the next 10 years. And as part of this, um, I don't think we're done with seeing new ships get announced for Disney Cruise Line. There's so much room for growth within that uh, sector and that division. And Disney Cruise Line's fleet of ships is relatively small compared to the rest of the cruise industry and the rest of the cruise companies. So I think we're going to see new ships get announced at D23, if I'm being honest. And I think these new ships will be being destined for the West Coast. As you know, we've seen them open up a new terminal, a new port in Florida, but they might be looking at building a brand new port in San Diego, most likely, because that is the port area in, um, in California, and have a major Disney Cruise Line port in California. And that would be a huge deal. And if they commissioned one or two ships to be servicing that whole section, that west coast of America, on, in a major way, and doing Alaskan cruises and Hawaiian cruises on a more consistent basis and just devoted to doing that, then there's a huge opportunity there and I think that that's where we'll probably see some Disney Cruise Line news at D23 Expo is moving towards the west coast and expanding out Disney Cruise Line operations over there as well. And then one last little thing which is a nighttime parade for Walt Disney World. I very, I've been mentioning this quite a few times over the last couple of years, but as of recently in February, I said that next year will be the time to actually have a new nighttime parade at Walt Disney World if they are to announce it. And uh, the WDW Magic Forms, the insiders over there, actually have been fairly uh, certain that a new nighttime parade is in development for Walt Disney World. So whether we see it for next year is a different matter, but maybe it's possible that'll be another announcement at d23 but we'll have to uh watch out for that one so with all that being said that's everything today you know hopefully we've covered a lot of ground and it has been as jam-packed as i originally said it was going to be but with all that being said for today it's now over to you walton is as i would like to know what are your thoughts and opinions on all of these rumors and speculation that's been discussed today uh ready for d23 in august you know and also what is the one thing that you would love to see get announced at d23 in august now obviously i'm going to be doing a lot more of these rumor roundup videos as we build up towards d23 we're now on the road to d23 after all and uh there's going to be a lot more news coming out and rumors coming out thick and fast so uh be sure to subscribe down below hit the notification bell icon and stay notified as you know now that i'm a dad 
I try and get these videos out as and when I can. So um, to make sure you do see the videos, hit the notification bell for all of that. And, you know, be sure to give this video a massive thumbs up. Check out the rest of the videos on this channel. And I'd also like to say a massive thank you to the official Waltonier Club over on Patreon for always supporting this channel. It's always greatly appreciated. And I'd like to say a huge thank you and a shout out to the Waltonier Gold members that you can see on the screen here, as well as Waltonier Diamond member, Kyle Mahan. And with all that being said for today, I've been Jack, you've been you, and I'll see you real soon.